In this video I'll show you how to check the normality assumption for a multi-level model or linear mixed effects model with R. Normality is one of the crucial assumptions for many statistical techniques. That's also true for multi-level modeling or linear mixed effects modeling. However, there's one additional challenge for a multi-level model. You have to check this assumption on more than one level. You have to make sure that the level 1 residuals are normally distributed, but you must also make sure that the level 2 random effects are normally distributed. That is, the random intercept and, if you have one or more random slopes, those as well. And in this video I show you how to do that. First we need to estimate the model. Here I use the LME4 package for the model estimation, but you could use the same technique for check the assumptions if you use the NLME package instead. This is a very simple example data set. It's a longitudinal model, but for a cross-sectional model the assumption check would be the same when it comes to normality. We have a reaction time, the number of days, and the subject number. The subject number is the level 2 unit, so we have time points nested within subjects. And in this case it's a sleep study investigating the effect of sleep deprivation on reaction time. I only use the days starting with day 2 because the first two days are baseline. And then I estimate the model. I have one fixed effect on level 1. And when it comes to random effects, I have a random intercept and a random slope for days. So we will have two random effects on level 2. And for both of them we will check the normality assumption. Here are the random effects. Residual on level 1 and the two random effects on level 2. In order to extract the residuals we use the HLM Diag package. Of course if you don't have it you have to install it once. I have already installed it so I just load it with a library command. And then we use the HLM resid function. Here is the resulting fit object of our multi-level model. Level equals 1 and standardize true. First we have the variables from our data set and then we have different standardized residuals. Interesting for us are those two columns, STD resid and STD LS resid. STD resid is the so-called empirical base estimation of the residuals. That's an estimation that uses information from both levels to estimate the residuals on level 1. That has the disadvantage that level 2 residuals can influence the estimates for the level 1 residuals. So in most cases it's better to use instead so-called least square residuals, this column here, to get those residuals, a separate least squares regression is calculated for each level 2 unit, so in this case for each person. And those le least square residuals have the advantage that they can't be influenced by any level 2 effects. So in general use the LS residuals, however it's only possible if you have sufficiently large sample sizes per level 2 unit. Here we have 8 observations starting with days 2 per person and only one fixed predictor, so this is sufficient in order to calculate a separate regression line for each person. Therefore here we will use the LS residuals. And for normality testing you can use any method more or less you know from regression. I primarily use two different methods for checking normality. I use the Shapiro-Wilk test. Here we can see it's not significant, so that's good. And a QQ plot. Data points are sufficiently near the diagonal line, so this looks okay. If we had smaller sample sizes for the level 2 units, that is here for the persons, or many more fixed predictors, then instead we would have to use the empirical base residuals. So this is exactly the same code, just without the LS in between. Interestingly here the normality test is significant, but again in this case I would trust the LS residuals. Before we go to the level 2 residuals, if later on you need help with your multi-level model, my name is Arndt Rigosh, I'm a statistics consultant. I provide video consultations for researchers and students around the globe. You can find a link to my services in the video description. To get the level 2 residuals we use the same HLM resid function and for level we don't write level 2, that wouldn't work, we have to put in the name of the clustering variable, in this case subject. Here we get two columns, STD RANEV, RANEV random effect, intercepts, so this is an estimation for the random intercept, random effect days, that is the random slope for days. For level 2 I don't use the LS estimates, here I use the empirical base estimates. Running the Shapiro-Wilk test for the random intercept, not significant, QQ plot, 
that looks okay. You can see the number of data points is much smaller here because the, this are the level two data points. That is the persons and not all measurement occasions. And then we do the same for the random slope for days. It's not significant. And the QQ plot, that looks fine too. So you see, it's quite easy to check normality for a multi-level model with R. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.